in becoming an uncle, particularly a, a young man who has really honestly grown up with a fantastic father, but I never got to really spend much time with my grandparents, my grandfathers. I take it really personal to um, be excellent with them. Like we do all the great stuff all the time. Monster trucks, rodeos, batting cages, making our own beef jerky, fishing, we do all the cool stuff. That's how we, we really man this stuff. Um, that's how I like to be with my nephew. Um, I was talking to some past groups about this. Um, in the height of some of the uh, uh, occurrences that happened uh, last November, when we had the loss of, of, of uh, Michael Brown Jr. and um, Eric Garner, kind of brought race to like a forefront issue in the country, which was probably a pretty necessary talk we had to have about what's going on. And instead of the talk kind of steering the way that I thought it had, a lot of people started debating whether the issue was political or not. And it's not political to me. And it's not political to me because I have a hard time imagining my 15-year-old nephew making the right decision in front of a police officer. Sometimes he has a hard enough time telling me the truth about his grades. I can only imagine what he would do if he was scared for his life. And I don't know how to make people understand this. It's not an argument to me. I don't have any arguments for you. This is just a fact. This is the way it feels in my body. And um, it's hard for me to write about something that seems so painfully simple. And then last year, um, the Denver Post sort of gave us a call over at Slam Duba and said, we want to do something a story, a video story that analyzes the race dynamics in Denver, and I said, sure, I'd love to show you my family and how hard it is on my older sister to know how to raise a black boy in the climate of this country right now, how hard it is on my, my dad, who has seen police brutality issues his entire life and has no idea how to manage change. Um, and so I wrote a poem, and I want to share that poem with you guys here today. Um, and because I am in front of everybody, I get to do it everything I want. It has some music on the back. Is it okay if I do some music too? That was a prestigious question. No, it's okay. Today, we're going tuxedo shopping for my nephew, Ken. He's 15 years old, and this is his first time making a grown man decision. Naturally, he wants the hot pink tie, the hot pink pants, and the alligator skin shoes. I'm optimistic. But he comes out the dressing room and my three-month-old nephew stretches his baby arms to the sky and lets out a giggle. I guess this is just how decisions are made in my household. See, on these days, we are all black boys. All smiles, all aspirations, bright brown eyed figuring this world out. Learning how to perfect our hair, our jump shots, our end zone dances, our mat games, while your mama makes you put grease on your elbows. We laugh explosive, teeth barely grown in. We ask questions of things we already know. We want to be famous and see the world, you know, like, like kids do. From 
Shirts, skinny ties, to flat billed hats and matching shoes, from finger waves to gumbies, mini froze to dreadlocks, fresh fit. The freshest of the fresh, ready to grab her hand during couple skate or bring home a report card. On these days, we are all black boys. All body bags. All filled with holes. All autopsies. All unrecognizable. Baptized in sirens and secrets, unaware that others could supersede our skin's darkness. On these days, we are all black boys. Our spirits drifting into the night sky. Nephews, cousins, un uncles, aunties, black boys. On these days, even grandfathers become boys. They stumble back at the time when the narrative was the exact same. When the entire neighborhood had a funeral in the middle of the street. For the kid whose name we all knew. Mother crying in the backdrop and black boys watched other black boys become asphalt on these days. Even sisters become boys. Only knowing how to teach them how to find the right girl when they're stolen. It feels like you're breathing molasses air. Eric Garner air. It travels through your body like a horse carriage casket lowered into your chest. Breathing is so heavy on these days and on these days we are all black boys. But especially those black boys. Ignorant and unaware as they should be. Emulating their favorite rapper, athlete, or man in their life. So full of effort. So willing to try. So unsure of the world's ways maybe wanting to be a police officer one day, a doctor, the president, hoping they could steer this thing in the right direction. And he could stitch his best friend back together, but he has no idea that he's growing up so fast. He can only see it in the way that they see him. Patrol cars are more hungry, billy clubs are more inspired, bullets are more lively, and he knows this. doesn't know why. He thinks he's famous. Doesn't feel the crosshair sizing him up, but we all do. But we all do. But we all do. But we all do. And we still fail to intercept what we saw coming. But these days, we are all black boys. All broken forever baffled, and right now, out there, in our own streets, 